Hello and welcome to another Wednesday Sessions. Last week I mentioned trying to get outside and was uh, sabotaged by some raindrops. Today I'm only uh, having to fight off a few gnats, but did want to give you a glimpse of um, the property. I know many of you have not, not been able to be on site in recent weeks and it's nice to, um, to see things again, right? To be reminded everything's still here, looking good. Um, of course we continue to be in that space. Every week I find myself saying, oh, how we long to be back together. And that remains the case, um, but it is glad, it is good for us to have this way of, uh, of connecting. Uh, so we'll make the best of it. A few updates, uh, or I guess one notably, uh, we've been talking about seed camp for several weeks now. This past Monday, just two days ago, we're really grateful for a group of our church members who went together with Elise Pittman and uh, took our our seed camp at home bags, those bags that Nancy and a team have been working on for a few weeks of stuffing with lots of great activities for the children of Perry County. Elise tells me they had uh, they they delivered to the various neighborhoods, and it was a treat for them to uh, see some of the children that they've done camp with in the past, and uh, and just to to have that experience of. Um, even though we're not able to do seed camp as we have in the past, to be able to to provide some piece of seed camp to the children of Perry County, grateful for that opportunity, and uh, and uh, and for Alabama CBF sowing seeds of hope for following through with that program this year and taking the initiative to get that done. On the prayer list, we don't have any additions this week. Uh, we do have a couple of. Um, Folks who have who are in the hospital, Nancy Welch and Mona Jeffers, short stays in the hospital and are, who are now home, and we give thanks for that. We're grateful for that news. So let's continue to remember their families. More and more pe folks in our circles are um, uh, being impacted by coronavirus. So let's remember those friends and families for whom that's coming close and um, causing, at a minimum, anxiety and other times um, considerable illness. So let's remember those. And as well, uh, we do have a long list on our prayer list of, uh, of healthcare workers, folks who are um, just more than essential. Really to say they're essential workers doesn't quite capture it. So as you pray, let's remember uh, the many among us uh, who are in the hospitals and providing uh, you know, critical care in these moments. One other uh, note, not necessarily on the prayer list, but didn't want to neglect to mention that um, we're looking forward to hearing from Dr. Cecilia Walker this Sunday in worship. You may remember uh, Cecilia. She shared with us on a few times uh, as a part of our Lenten series and then most recently in a conversation with uh, Gary and I uh, around racial, racial reconciliation. So it'll be a delight to have her with us as our guest preacher. So you want to make sure uh, that you uh, tune in on Sunday morning for that service. We'll hear from Nancy tonight. Nancy has a special guest uh, that she'll be interviewing in just a moment. And so uh, before we hand things over to Nance, uh, let's, let's pray together. Lord, we give you thanks for the many among us who are, um, who are caring folks, caring for folks in this um, anxious time. We have so many nurses and physicians and other healthcare workers who uh, day by day uh, leave their homes and put themselves at risk. And um, we want them to know that they're on our minds and uh, in our prayers. So we pray for their, their health and safety and also that uh, they would, that they are um, feel, feel empowered by you and taking advantage of this opportunity to, to minister in a, a trying time. We pray for uh, the Welch and Jeffers family and the recovery of of Nancy and Nina, Mina, and uh, for the many others, the unnamed among us who are dealing with um, illness, uh, the losses we've had in recent days, we continue to remember those families. Uh, it not being together sometimes makes it difficult to uh, be as mindful or to keep track of um, the grief and the uh, struggles that our the members of our fellowship are um, dealing with. So for all those things that we know are happening, but we don't know the names or the people. Uh, we're 
comforted that you know the names, you know the circumstances, and you are more than enough in those moments. God, we pray that for us you would um, continue to uh, empower your church, encourage us to be your people, calm our anxieties, comfort us in our own times of trial. Uh, we pray all this in Christ. Amen. All right, uh, let's get to, to Nancy and Sue Edfeld. Hello, everyone. As many of you know that Sue Edfeld and Marianne Goodson have taught the kindergarten class here at our church for many, many years, and we are so grateful for them. Last week, they both let me know that it was time for them to retire. So I thought this would be a wonderful time to um, hear from Sue, and she will speak for Mary Ann too. But I thought it would be a wonderful time to hear from her and um, chat about her many years of teaching. And I know many uh, parents join me in a debt of gratitude for um, both of them, for their many years of service at our church um, and their love for our children. And really just not in that classroom, but their impact um, runs throughout our church. So Sue, I'm so grateful um, for you today and every day. And um, I'll ask the obvious question, uh, the first question, how many years have you been teaching? And then tell us how you started uh, teaching children. Well, you know, Mary and, and I, neither one can remember exactly how long. I think it's somewhere between 45 and 50 years. Uh -huh. um, and the way it started, Mary Ann was teaching and needed a helper, and I volunteered, and uh, never thinking it would last this long. But that has just been a love of my life, teaching preschoolers. And she mentioned to me the other day on the phone that uh, she had a room full of children one time, and you went by. And that you went to your class and told them, I'm going back to help Mary Ann. That's how it all started. Uh -huh. yeah. That's great. And that was in the old building, of course. Mm -hmm. And I guess the nicest thing that's happened to us since we've been teaching is the new children's building. Right. What a miracle that was. It's pretty Just wonderful. Having a sink in the room where you can rinse out or let them wash their hands or get a drink without having to take them down the hall. Yeah. It meant a lot. Now, how many years did you teach in our Child Development Center? 20 years, from okay. 78 to 98. Okay. And uh, But I never got to teach in the new building. Oh, that's it right. built after that. Right. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay. If I had to leave the room for something, I would get Henry to come in, and they called him Roro. Mm -hmm. I told him he missed his calling. He should have been a kindergarten teacher. He is great with children. He is, he is wonderful. Yes. Um, how does teaching um, work with your Christian faith? Well, I just love telling stories. Mm -hmm and to be able to tell the stories out of the Bible. And that was what I did in our class. Mm -hmm. I did the group time and told the stories and had the Bible verse. And uh, it was very easy for me to uh, come into that teaching children the Christian way of living and life. Do you have any funny memories, funny stories to share with us? <laughs> well, uh, I remember one time around Thanksgiving, we were singing over the fields and th whatever, over, and one little boy said, well, I can't do that. My grandmother lives in a condo. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, one little boy was fussy and disruptive at group time. And I said, what 
is really bothering you? And he said, the stories are too long. And I said, well, I'll make a deal with you. If you will sit quietly, I promise to make the story shorter. And no problem after that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. But now, you know, I see uh, children that I taught with children of their own. That means a lot. When I, a few Wednesdays, nights ago, when I saw the graduates this year, I had taught all but one who wow. had joined after five-year-old. And it's that way just about every year when we see the graduates. So that means a lot to me. That, that's such a, a beautiful picture of um, what we are called to do. And uh, the seeds you have planted throughout your life, um, you'll well, never really know, you know. I've told Paul several times, I said, I don't really feel like I'm sacrificing doing this because I love it so. And he said, well, how many people do you know would want to teach five-year-olds every Sunday? <laughs> this is your calling. Yeah. And I believe it. Yeah. I think your calling. I believe yeah. me to see Mary Ann with all those children that morning. Yeah. We spoke about uh, Thanksgiving uh, a few minutes ago and what are some of uh, your most special times during the year to teach children? Do you have any special uh, Well, of course, uh, times? Christmas time. I love that. And Easter. Yeah. And we, of course, have to be careful with preschoolers about how much we say uh, about that Friday at Easter time and not make it sound they can learn that later uh, but we talk about new things and flowers and new babies being born and yeah. uh, new life yeah. and then at Christmas I always love that story and telling that story yeah. and of course when you're teaching preschoolers you do have to be explain things. Mm -hmm. When I, I always told the story, I never read it. And I would tell them, oh, this story is going to be, you know. And um, for instance, the story about Jesus going to the temple. And I would always stop and say, now the temple is like what we call our church now. Right. And um, then when Pharaoh's daughter found the baby in the basket, well, Pharaoh is what we call a king. So they understand that. And I think uh, for them to know what to expect when they come in, have everything kind of a routine, not that you can't change things, but they know when they come in that they go to the art table with Mary Ann. And then from there, they go to the uh, table with James, which used to be home living. We don't call it home living, but they do things. And then I always say, now in five minutes, finish up, we're going to have group time. So they know, I don't just say come to group time, you know, give them time to finish a picture or building a train track. And then you have to be sensitive when they come in. Uh, occasionally one will be resisting coming in and have a frown on their face or tears in their eyes and you know something has gone on on the way to church. So just let them go sit in a chair and be quiet. And then after they kind of calm down, you can say, uh, Mary is dressing the baby doll. Do you want to help? Or Jack's trying to put that train track together. Do you want to help him? Mm -hmm. And they're ready to get up then and go. That's wonderful. And you mentioned James, uh, James Carr has taught with you and Mary Ann and Natalie Garland for several years and um, has made such a contribution. But who are some of the other people you have taught with through the years? 
Well, um, back near the beginning, Amy would do the home living for a long time. Your daughter. Uh, as okay. her children were coming along. Right. And uh, then when I guess when she got involved in handbells, she had to drop out. And then um, Martha Eskew taught with us for a while. And um, oh dear, I can't think of her name. She remarried and went, became a pastor's wife. Cynthia. Cynthia. Cynthia was great. Yeah. Oh, she's such and a good Cynthia family. left. That's when you got James to come in. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Mitchell. That's what yes. Mm -hmm. And so. you've had some good substitutes through the years. Uh, Kathy Comfer is. Uh, she's. I know she's sub for you. She would always tell the story for me if I was occasionally sick or out of town, mm -hmm. and Marty would always come. She filled in. Marty for, Mullins. When uh, Charles was sick, she right. filled in for Mary. Yeah, yeah. Well, what would you tell people who are looking uh, for a place to serve in their church? What would you say to people? Well, if you love children, you would love teaching them like I did. And there's such a reward in it to see as they learn things and remember from one Sunday to the next. Yeah. And as the parents tell you things, they have come home and said. And um, I just think it's such an important time in their lives before they start regular school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I hope there are others out there that would like to come and take our place. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love you. I love you too. And I know many, many do. So yeah. oh, I just am so grateful for you, for your uh, friendship and for all you and Mr. Paul have given to our church. Just grateful, so grateful. Well, we love it and we love the church and I've just always loved children and I've loved teaching them. So I always treasure that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thanks for um, letting me record this today and I just appreciate it so much and I know others will um, enjoy hearing from you. Thank you so much. All right. And many thanks to, to Mary Ann for her years of service and to all our teachers. Ouch.